Hey there, have you ever played Dosu? Play a 5 star map and then miss every single circle and think to yourself, man, I really suck at this game. I mean, yeah, I kinda suck at Dosu, but I don't think it's my fault, you know? I think it's the fault of the keyboard. Of, I mean, look at it, I'm using my laptop's keyboard. This doesn't feel any good to use. I'm sure that if I get a nice little Osu keypad, I will be easily passing 5 star maps. You know what? Let's shop for one. So that's when you realize that paying from about 20 to 30 dollars just for two keys for a game you suck at is not really worth it. Hey, but what if I really want a keypad? Like, I don't want to keep using my laptop's keyboard. I don't, I don't like it. I just, I just want two nice switches or buttons or something to press. You know, to enjoy playing also. What can I do? So that's why I'm making this video to show you the process I went through to make my own Osu keypad. So first of all, I went to the local hardware store and bought a breadboard, some game switches and a bunch of wires. So let's start with the game switches. For the game switches, I choose these Baolian game switches. When you think of game switches or arcade buttons, you may think of brands like Sanwa, but the bottoms of these brands are quite expensive so I went with the Balian switches because they were the cheapest at my local hardware store. So these bottoms are very tall and it consists of two main parts, the bottom itself and the switch. A switch is a 3 pin switch which has a little actuator on the top and it has a nice little click to it. Take a listen. As you can see the bottom has some legs on it and the switch it has some holes in it so to assemble them you just have to line them up and there you have it you have your bottom assembled and ready to go so after that I took my breadboard and my Arduino and I assembled the test bed I will use the test bed to test my programming and if the buttons work correctly so I grabbed my breadboard and my Arduino Nano and connected the respective wires to the corresponding places uh, for example ground to ground and BC in to the positive side of the breadboard then I took some alligator connectors and connected the top pin to the ground and the bottom pin to the pin number 2 in the Arduino and then I did some programming. The programming I did was pretty simple. It will show uh, in the serial monitor that the button is pressed when I press the button and vice versa. Also, it will make a LED turn on when the button is pressed. So after I wrote my code, I checked the code. As you can see, I press the button and the little LED on the Arduino is turned on and as you can see on the serial monitor when I press the Arduino when I press the bottom you can see that shows that it's pressed so you may be thinking well the next next step is just to solder the button to the Arduino and there you have it we have a keypad right well, not quite exactly, because you see, the Arduino Nano doesn't natively support uh, data via USB. So what we need is an Arduino board that has the Atmega 32U4 chip. And in this case, I grabbed my bike, went to the local hardware store again, and bought some Arduino Pro Micros. But that's not the only thing I bought from the local hardware store. I also bought some cables with the female Fatson terminal in the end. So these Fatson terminal are the number 187 to be specific and they're often called quick disconnect cables and I will use them because 
when, if I want to replace the switches at some point, I don't want to desolder and solder again the switches. So this will be great for modifying the buttons on the f near future. Now that we have all the components, what we have to do is solder them all. With a little bit of solder and the power of editing, there we go. Here we have the Osu keypad. Hey, but where are we gonna put all the components? Well, I looked around my room and I realized that I had a lot of tissue boxes laying around, so I just decided to use one of them. I cut some holes in the tissue box to make up for the buttons and then put all the components in. First the buttons and then the switches and voila, we have the Osupad 1.0. So now that we have our keypad completed, the only thing left to do is to make the program. Well, the program is pretty easy. We just have to use the keyboard layout and use the keyboard press function to emulate the key press. So finally, that's how I made my own Osu keypad. It was quite easy actually. I thought that it would be very difficult, but it wasn't. Well, in any case, here's a sound test. So, was it worth it? Well, it actually was. It was quite easy to make and also it was quite cheap to make I mean here is the price list so there you have it if you want to make your own Osuki pad like I did give it a try it's very easy to make so if you like the video please consider it giving it a thumbs up if you didn't like the video well you can dislike it and you can tell me in the comment what should I improve to make my videos better if you want consider subscribing and all the code I showed in this video will be in my github down below in the description. Thank you for watching, I was Tenkai and I will see you in the next time, bye bye.